So we're going to be talking quite a lot about the orbits yes. of these quantum metal objects, transept union objects, and so we're going to have these orbits are not circles. Yes. So for a circle, there's basically just one number to describe the orbit, how far out it is. But that's a bit more tricky for these orbits. So we're going to. This is just a uh, how we describe elliptical orbits that's right. video. So the first thing we talk about is what's called the eccentricity. And eccentricity is defined as zero if something's in a perfect circle. And it gets bigger and bigger as the orbit gets more and more flattened. OK, so can you go beyond one in terms of eccentricity? Then it's no longer an orbit. If it's beyond one, it would be a parabola or a hyperbola. So you go from zero to one. The one would be an infinitely right. elongated yes. orbit. So oh, 0 0.999. So, but essentially, we kind of run out. So does that mean we have objects that are less eccentric than objects that are more eccentric because of that? Yeah, that's right. So this is just a number that tells you how squashed the circle is. So the Earth will be very close to eccentricity zero. Uh, Pluto is around eccentricity of 0 0.3, I believe. Yep. Um, so this is, this is a, a squashedness number. Okay. Zero is a perfect circle. One is incredibly squashed. OK. Um, another thing we need to know is how much the orbit is tilted. And so this is tilted with respect to the plane of the solar system in this case. That's right. So the plane of the ecliptic, which all planets orbit in. And if something's tilted, that's called inclination. It's basically the angle between its uh, orbit and the orbits of everything else. Now, can you be inclined up and can you be inclined down? That's right. Um, but you could use the angle at the side as well. Yeah, OK. Yep. Um, so basically, a 90 degree inclination would be something that goes up and down. OK. Um, and if you have angles of more than 90 degrees, which is actually going backwards around the sun. Oh, right, because it's going... If it was 180, it would be in the same plane, but it would be going, going backwards compared to all the other planets. Um, other things we can talk about is the size of these orbits. Okay. Um, so here we have the sun and Uranus, Neptune and Pluto. Okay. And for each orbit that's eccentric, um, we can draw a line that goes along the long axis, the, lo the extended axis, so that's mm -hmm. called the major axis. There's also a minor axis up here. So, so, the, so for an eccentricity of zero, I guess major and minor are the, the same. same. And the more eccentric it is, the, the more different they are. The major right. will get bigger and bigger, and the minor will get smaller and smaller. Yep. Now, a particular number we are often interested in is the closest approach to the sun and the furthest. So the closest is the perihelion yep. and the furthest is the aphelion. Yes. So peri means near. Yep. So helion, helios, the sun. So perihelion means nearest yes. the sun and aphelion yes. the furthest from the sun. Yep. We use the same terminology for spacecraft. That's right. In this case, it's not to the sun, it's usually to the earth. That's right. So there'd be the we call it Earth G, so you'd have the peri G, which is the closest encounter to the Earth, and the apogee, which is the furthest. And the Moon does this as well. We talk about it in terms of perigee and apogee. Yeah. And if you're in orbit around the Moon, you probably have a perilunar and an aplunar. And, and there's perijovian like and there's abjovian and stuff like that yes. as well. So again, for the eccentricities of zero, most of the planets, perihelion and aphelion are Not the much same. Different. Pretty much the same, yes. Same. Yep. Um, but for eccentric objects, as we've been talking lots about, uh, the perihelion will be much smaller than the aphelion. Yeah. And the bigger the difference, the more eccentric the orbit is. Yes, OK. So eccentricity is quite small. Then they might be a 20 or 30% different. A very large one might be 100% different or even more than that. The other number we use is a semi-major axis, uh, written in the letter A. And that's half of the major axis. Yep. And that's often used because it's kind of like an average distance out. Yeah, OK, yeah. So you know, at the perihelion would be less than the semi-major axis away from the sun. At uh -huh. aphelion would be more, but the semi-major axis is often used as a sort of average distance. Average. So and, and again, for most planets, that average is the same. But for these very eccentric, yeah. So for the Earth, the semi-major axis, the perihelion, the aphelion, the, and the minor and half the minor axis are all about the same thing. That's right. But for something like Pluto, they're all going to be different. Yep.